Hey everyone! For today's how-to, I'll be showing you how you can add hand texturing to your 3D models and scenes. This video is going to be specific for Smith Micro's Poser, but it's the same basic process for other 3D programs too. To get this started, we're going to need a 3D model. Any of the ones built into Poser will do. Now, if you have an OBJ file, which is a 3D model, you can actually skip this step and just bring that file right into Photoshop. There's the issue that if you've done some deforming for your model, the mesh will change, which means your textures will be applied a bit differently than if you were to just put it on the stock model. Long story short, we'll need to export our models from Poser so we can make the texture. To do that, head up to File at the top and go to the Export submenu. You have a lot of options here, from flat images to Lightwave and ZBrush files, where you can do more work on the models from there. But for our purposes, we'll go with Wavefront OBJ. When you click it, you'll open a window where you can decide if you want to export just one frame or a whole animation. For texturing, you're only going to need one frame usually, so hit OK. Another window will open up then, with all the props and figures in your scene. Here you can pick what you're exporting. You can select as many objects as you want, and if you have a lot of props, you can even click Select All. If you do click Select All though, make sure you deselect your ground object up at the top. If you leave it selected, it will screw up the export, or at least that's been my experience with it. When you've picked the objects you want to export, click OK again, and we'll get into our export options. We have a decent list of things we can do here, but for our purposes, we can just click OK. If you want to keep things organized, you can choose Preserve Existing Material Names and use Full Texture Pass, which will make it so your OBJ file will have the same exact texture names as your model. You can also check Copy Textures to Destination if you want the actual image files being used for the textures. When you click OK this time, you'll be able to pick where you're exporting to in the next window. And you're good! Now let's jump into Photoshop. You can drag the OBJ file you just made into Photoshop or whatever your graphics editor of choice is. When you open it, the new document window will open up. Here you can change the measurement used for the actual 3D object and the type of document. You can also change the size of the actual document you'll be opening your 3D object in. I typically tend to go with 1920 by 1080. Hit OK, and you'll have your document with the 3D object. And just as importantly, you'll have the 3D layer with all of your textures in your Layers panel. We'll get to that in a sec, but first it's a good idea to save the document you just made as a PSD file. This will let you work on the textures and save the work as you go, which is just generally a good idea. That done, we can double click on any part of the layer, and you'll open up the texture file. Now when you open up a 3D object in Photoshop, you may have a large grid of white lines that really don't tell you much of anything necessarily. This is your model's mesh. In theory, it's a very good idea meant to tell you where things in your model are so you can work with it. But most of the time, I find that this is actually more distracting than anything. Especially in something like this, where you already have a map in the image telling you what things go where. So, you could turn this off by opening up our Properties panel and unchecking UV Overlay. We can also preview our texture on the model as we're working with it. To do that, under the Window menu at the top of the program, in the Arrange menu, we can choose Two Up Horizontal. This will split our workspace into two windows with one on top of the other. Alternatively, we could do the same thing but have them next to each other, which is my preferred method if we go with vertical instead. Now in the window for our texture, while it's active, we can use the brush tool and move around. You might notice that down in the window with our model, a white crosshair will show up and move with our brush over that model. This gives you an idea of where you are in relation to the model itself. If we click and drag the brush around, the color will show up on the model too, which I tend to use for blocking out where things will go. Also, because all our textures are their own Photoshop files, we can add layers here. 
So you can add a lot of layered effects here using masks, brushes, images, etc. just like any other Photoshop creation. If your changes aren't showing up, just save the texture file. That should update how things look on the model. From there, it's just a matter of working on your texture until you're satisfied. When you're done, save your texture as a JPEG and work out the rest of the textures you're using as needed. And lastly, let's apply the textures we just made. To do that, we'll first need to head back to Poser with our project open. In there, we will need to use what's called the Materials Room. For what we're doing, we'll also need to switch over to the Advanced tab, which gives us a lot more control over every facet of a prop's textures. This will depend on the model you're working with, but some will have a texture ready to go. If that is the case, you should see a window with the words Image Map up at the top. If you click the first thing in that window, you'll open up the window for the source image. You can then browse your computer and find the textures you've made. Once you click out of the window, your new texture will show. Now if you're using a model that doesn't have a texture, you can make it from scratch. To do that, first click on the ring to the right of your diffuse color. In the menu that opens up, go into New Node, and under 2D Textures, add an image map. From there, it's the same thing. Pick your image, and it'll apply to the model. You can do the same thing for the displacement, transparency, spec mapping, and all other settings as well. And as a last tip, up on the top right, you'll see the name of your model, and next to that, the part of the model you're texturing. You can use these menus to switch and do the same things for every part of the scene as well. And that was how to use textures in Poser and other 3D programs that work similarly. I hope everyone's learned something and had fun doing it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or other feedback, you can let me know with a comment below or with a message to at ET underscore studios on Twitter. And I'm planning to be back here every Friday, so be sure to subscribe for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.